I'm back three times, three times back. I know it's a, it's like the boy who cried wolf, but it doesn't matter. I'm here. Welcome to today's episode of The Corner Store. It's your boy, Gerald Cadet. And as always, I always have a great and wonderful episode for y'all today. Um, first, I, I put it down in my notes. I'm back. I'm going to try and not to leave. I know I did a video back in, I think, early November. I was thinking I was going to get the ball rolling there. And then, you know, it'd be like that sometimes. It, it, it'd be like that sometimes. I, I, I got no excuse. It'd be like that sometimes. We're going to just move forward and keep going, keep pushing. Let's get right into it. My first topic was going to be about Deshaun Watson, but let me talk about what my... My first time is going to be about Deshaun Watson, but I'm going to leave that to the... Uh, I'm going to put that in the back. So my first topic would be about the Washington Wizards. Let's talk some NBA. I haven't talked about the NBA. I didn't even do a freaking um, NBA preview season. I have a lot of things to talk about with the NBA, but I think I'm going to say that for another episode because the NBA, the way that the NBA is uh, today... It's it's a lot. I I I'm, I, and I think I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna dive deep deep into the NBA. Pause. So, why am I talking about the the Washington Wizards? I have teams like the the Warriors I could talk about. I have teams like the Lakers I could talk about. I have teams like the Clippers I could talk about. The Knicks, the Nets. Why the Washington Wizards? So last last week last week or we could say even the past two weeks. A lot of social media pages like Bleach Report, ESPN, Sports Center, all, all that stuff. A lot of people, fans, have been saying free Bradley Bill. The John, the Bradley Bill, John Wall experiment ain't work. The Bradley Bill, Russell Westbrook, up to this point ain't work. But I was like, nah, 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 nah. Russell. I'm, I'm, I'm a big Russell Westbrook fan. I'm not gonna say Russell Westbrook is my favorite player. He's one of my favorite players. I'm not gonna say he's my favorite player, but I'm I'm saying to myself, Russell Westbrook, he's he's brought a team worse than this to the playoffs before. So, so I thought he brought a team worse than this to the playoffs before. How come he can't do it with a player like Bradley Bill who keeps showing off, having scoring sixty, scoring fifty seven, scoring fifty three, fifty six, all in L's? What could be the case? So last night. I watched the the Brooklyn Nets go up against the Washington Wizards. I, I'm not gonna say I watched the whole thing from start to finish. I watched. I, I was going in and out. I watched my boy Brody change back, uh, change the hands of time, and, and and go for 41, eight and ten, game winning three. Shout out Kev. <laughs> game winning three. But throughout the game, I'm saying to myself, there is only. Two players on the Washington Wizards that are good, and that's Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook. And what's even worse, so, so I, 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 I want to first preference by saying this: you could win games with two good to great players. You could win games with two to great play, two, two good to great players. That's not what I'm arguing. What I'm saying, trying to say is you can't win nothing in, in this, in any type of basketball with two good to great players and everybody else. There's no, there's no dog. There's no, you, you need scrappers. The reason why LeBron is so successful, LeBron, yes, he, 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 he's one, he's one of the greatest basketball players of, of our generation for, for a while. I think, a, I think a five, six year stretch, he was the best player in the NBA but he always surrounded himself with guys that are going to get after it defensively, are going to dive at the loose balls, are going to do everything and anything to win a game, to help LeBron James propel to what he actually did in 2016, win a championship, or last year, 2020, um, win the NBA Finals. You need dogs. You need scrappers. You need, you need I, 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 as much as I don't, I don't like his character, you need a bunch of Bradley Beal. I'm not Bradley Beal. Patrick Beverly's. You need a bunch of Patrick Beverly's. There's only three. After watching that game against the Nets, there's only three players who are good that I would want from the Washington Wizards. 
Ish Smith, because he he's the only person I seen I saw with that dog mentality. Ish Smith, Russell Westbrook, and Bradley Bill. That's only three players. That that Hashimoro guy, he's garbage, man. I think that was the first time I actually paid attention to him in a game. That guy's garbage. Robin Lopez is a third string center. I'm not talking about football. <laughs> um who else? They 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 have uh, Wagner v Wagner v v Wagner. I, I don't know how to say, it, but he's 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 a good role player, but he's not a guy that like oh I need minutes from him. You give him like five six minutes at the end of the game. Um, who else is there? I I don't even know. I don't even I can, no, There's no other names popping out, but those three names: Ish Smith, Russell Westbrook, Bradley Beal, all could play on any any NBA team. The rest of those guys really can't. So now we got to talk about this. So Bradley Beal signed, I believe it was about a uh, $200 million contract he signed recently. Um, Bradley, why don't you, I don't know, this is from a, I guess, I guess I always had the mindset of a football owner. Take a pay cut, restructure your contract, get some more players, get some valuable players, get some good, you don't even need, like, that's the thing about the NBA now. We're always trying to find the next big three. Yes, yes, we have it right now in, in Brooklyn. Yes, um, we had it in Miami back in 2011. Yes, we. I guess you, you could say you, you had something like that in uh, with the Clippers last year, the, the whole hoopla with the two superstars and, and this and that. But that's like you, 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 you're picking like top five players to team up and then still you have a bunch of hard nosed rough rough guys on on the team that like evens it out. My question is with the Washington Wizards front office, you have Bradley Beal, I'm not even going to go to Russell Westbrook. Yet. You have Bradley Beal, you have John Wall. Two dogs. Your best team I believe was 2015. Yeah, you have Bradley Beal, John Wall, Otto Porter, but I'm not going to say he's really a dog. Um Gortat Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce, he made that team. He made that team. Paul Pierce made that team because, because of the grit, the, the energy that he gave. But ever since then, you don't really have you haven't really had anybody that had the, the, the grit or the, the toughness, the mental toughness. I'm not talking about physical toughness. I'm talking about mental toughness. When when when, when things got down, like in the in the last game, the game against the Nets. So many times I seen defensive breakdowns, which is okay. I mean, it's it's not it's not acceptable. It's okay, but what's terrible is you have guys doing this. <sighs> Come on, man! Like 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 they they they're all stressed. Out. The only person I didn't see do that though was Russell Westbrook. Just want to put that. Just want to put that in perspective right there. But a whole bunch of guys looking, complaining sign like no that that doesn't any sport that does not win you don't win with that you don't win with that man it, it's it's tough and, and then for bradley bill to be dropping points i mean yeah that's that, that's what the media is gonna say i'm i, I, I don't want to say the media is gonna say that but like that's what is gonna be um popularized the most is he, he's, he's he's dropping all this amount of points but He's not bringing the team together. He's not, and and it's not his fault. I'm uh, like, like, I, like I keep going back to. There's not, there's not any dogs on the team. So, so if if you guys want to blame something on, if you guys want to blame something on, if you guys want to blame the Wizards starts on Russell Westbrook, you guys are disingenuous for that. It's not his fault. He got traded to the team. It wasn't like he up and like, oh, I wanted to go to the Wizards. Or like he left, like he got out of his Houston contract, and then said, "Yeah, yeah, let, yo, Bradley, let's go." Like I, I, I like that team that you got. He just came into the situation. He had his coach. He had Bradley Bill. That's about it, man. That, that that that's really it. I still think they have a chance, and hopefully, the game that happened last night is like the starting point. Just to, I, I don't think they're making the playoffs. I like I'm gonna put that out there. I don't think they're making the playoffs. I, I that's that's for my that's for my guys in blue and orange, man. I'll talk about them on another episode, but to 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 talk about it, Shaq always brings it up. Shaq always brings it up. The others need to step up. 
Bradley Beal scoring all these points, but the others need to play some defense. The others need to play some team defense, communicate. Say, hey, I got ball, I got ball. Hey, boy, watch the pick, watch the pick. Hey, rotate, like rotate, talk, do all that stuff. Watch the pin down screens, all that stuff. All that, th all those things that equate to winning basketball. I'm going to go back to LeBron again. LeBron, arguably one of the best players of, of this generation. He, you always hear him talking, especially when the time is coming, like when it's game time. He's always, he's, he's always talking, communicating on offense and defense. I barely saw that with the Washington Wizards last night, and they still won the game because Brody had a MVP like ex uh, explosion. Bradley Beal came in when it was it, the times were getting tough. You had a few guys. You had uh, twenty four. I can't think of twenty four name. It could have been Wagner, but you had him come up big. That's what they. That's what you need on teams. You, with effort, Kenny Smith, another, another inside uh, NBA TNT guy, says, says it the best. On effort alone, you could have... Uh, okay, so I'm 5'8", 5'9", 5'9", for the ladies out there, I'm 6'2". I'm um, you could, with just effort, so a bunch of 6'2 guys like me, a bunch of effort... You guys could go 41 and 41 with just effort. You don't, you don't have to have great talent, great skills, just effort alone. You guys go 41 and 41. What I see, and, and this is, I'm not singling out the Washington Wizards because this is not only a Washington Wizards situation problem. This is a league wide problem. That's why there's only about six, seven teams like legitimately good in the league. Effort, man. Effort. I, like I said, I, I'll probably go a little deeper on that, maybe on, on a future episode with the NBA. But a lot of guys, they get down by 10 in the first quarter, 15 in the first quarter. They just quit. They just start saying, oh, is my check coming on Tuesday? Pre-pandemic, but hey, man, what 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 club are we going to tonight? It's tough, bro, but I'm not going to blame Russell. I'm not going to blame Bradley. That The Wizards front office front office has disappointed them to the fullest extent. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay on the NBA real quick for a second because another thing that came up to me, came into my into my grill, into my whatever you want to call it, into my, my mental, is NBA MVP. So I've learned that the NBA MVPs, for some reason, I, I, like at this point, I, the Betty Nodge or whatnot, you have Joker, um, I'm Nikolai Jokic, Joel Embiid, LeBron James, which is, uh, I don't know, and Kevin Durant. All, all like, the high, they had the highest betting odds in who wins the MVP this year. Where is Steph Curry? Where is Stephon Wendell Curry's name and all this? To me, Steph Curry is the MVP of the NBA. Granted, I have not been, and and, and you see me, I'm telling you guys the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm not like the other people. I'm not throwing no shade. I'm not like the other people being like, oh, you know, look, just looking down at the stats. I have not seen Joel and B play. This season, I mean, I I seen him play a little bit, but I haven't seen him like I haven't like focus my 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 focus. I haven't focused on him. <laughs> um, but to me, Steph Curry is the MVP of this, the regular season. Steph Curry is averaging thirty points a game, about six assists a game. But it's all about this right here, the eye test. What is that team without Steph Curry? They're they're trying to get another uh, a bunch of uh, ping pong balls in in in, in that um thing for for the lottery right right the the best player after that is Andrew uh, best player after that is Draymond Green Draymond Green is Draymond Draymond man Draymond Draymond um, Kelly Oubre was supposed to be a, a splash he's 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 
he's on a downward he's he's on a downward projection right now. He could bring it up. He could bring it up. It's a long NBA season still. Seventy two games is long. Well, that was in total, so uh, what's it like fifty something games left? He he could bring it back up. Andrew Wiggins, this man doesn't want to play basketball. He just does it just to do it. Um, so besides Steph Curry, who who is like keeping the the, the Warriors afloat? And he's averaging 30, 30 and a half, I believe, 29, 30 and a half points, six assists, over 40% shooting. And then this is a guy that takes a lot of threes. Supposedly. Supposedly. But what constitutes as who is the NBA MVP? If, if I if they called me up and be like, hey Gerald, we want you to vote on your league MVP. How would I go with it, right? No, you, you know, I, I wrote this down. It's, you know, I'd I, I be preparing sometimes for for my episodes, and I just, you know, I'm, I'm like, I it, bro. I don't, I don't feel like recording, right? So one time, I, I asked myself that question, too. I asked myself that question. What, how do I pick an MVP? Am I only concerned with the, with the numbers? My only concern is the numbers. Bradley Bill should be top three. He should have been top three last year. Bradley Bill should have been top three last year in MVP voting. If it's just if it's just the numbers, if it's just the numbers, because the most the most important number in basketball, most important number in football, most important number in hockey, most important number in baseball is points. How many points are you you're putting up? How many points are you helping your team with to propel them to a victory? Bradley Bill should have been top three last year. For me, my three criterias for MVP will be the presence, your presence on the court. That's that's, that's my number one. So the presence. So my eye, the eye test right here. If you just done way they do it in college, or I guess they used to do it in college because now people have names on their back. You have no name on the back. Who's the one that's showing out the most? Who's the one that's showing out the most? The presence. Me, that that could range. That could range. Who, who, who? So, so someone like KD. I, I think KD is up there too in MVP voting. I think KD. This man's coming off an injury. Yeah, we know the whole backstory and all that stuff. But you watch him on the court, especially with games where the where, where I, I feel like it's better to watch him when when Nets are losing than than when the Nets are winning, right? The thing that he does, driving into the basket, dunking the ball, shooting his threes, mid range on point, you can't you 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 can't stop that guy. The, the reason why that guy gets stopped is because he misses a shot. Like it, you can't you can't go one hundred for one hundred. You can't go twenty for. I mean, you can't go twenty for twenty, but you can't go one hundred one hundred for four hundred in an NBA game. I I don't think I'll ever see that. But him, the presence on the his presence on the court, you feel it. Like you're you're at home watching it, you feel it. Steph Curry is the same way. Joker, there's games where Joker, like you feel Joker's presence in the game. Like you're not in the game, you're not in that arena, but you feel the heat. You feel it. You feel it. I I, I really hope you guys are trying. I really hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Like you feel the presence. Of LeBron James a lot of time. One game. There's the the my, I I how do you explain it? So, LeBron's best game in my opinion. A lot of blind witnesses are going to come after me, but LeBron James' best game, in my opinion, is against Boston, the Boston Celtics, 2012, Game 6. Five minutes into the game, you know you know the Heat are winning. You know the Heat are winning five minutes into the game. Because LeBron, it's not even what he did on the court. It was, he just got onto the court with a different swagger about himself. It was like, I got this. Like, this is on me. Put this on my back. And he delivered. He delivered. First quarter, the game was over after the first quarter. Let's, 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 the Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, all those guys can say all um, everything you want. That game was over after the first quarter. But it was because of his presence. The number two thing I'll, I'll, I'll put into consideration is stats. Yes, stats are, stats are important. You got to differentiate. So, a guy... I'm trying to think of an example, but like a guy, he's averaging 32 point, 
like 2012, 2013, I believe, when Kobe and KD, they didn't end up winning the, the, the MVP. It was LeBron James, but Kobe and KD. Say, so say both of them were 1 in one, 1A and 1B for, for, for MVP. Kobe averaged 20, 27.7 points that, that year. KD averaged 20, 27.8 points that year. Okay, those things cancel out. What else did you do? Assists. Field goal percentage, all that stuff that 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 matters. That you got to put that into play, but it's not, it's not. It doesn't supersede the the eye test, bro. Who is the best player on the court? Who do you feel like? Damn, this guy's on the court right now. This this, this thing's about it. Like, it's, shit's about to go left. Like like like, like you got to you got to be like that. So, stats is important, and then number three. I feel like this is very like sketch, uh, uh, like choppy. I, I guess I should have worked harder on it. But number three would be key moments. After the season's over, who do you remember the most? What games do you remember the most? What games? Uh, I'm thinking about the 2020, 2021 season. Ah, this the, the I remember. I remember when. This streak was made. I remember when that block was what, what, what happened. I rem- I remember how how monumental his run, his fifteen points in a quarter was. Those are my three criteria. Hey Amen. What 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 are you guys' three criteria for MVP? Put it down below. Uh, for my YouTube viewers, my SoundCloud people, you can put it down below too. You can put it in the comments or whatnot, or you could just go on my Twitter and. Talk to me or something like that. Anyway, but um, yeah, that's that. that that's that's how that's how I think you should uh put out MVP. So right now, if it was me, in my opinion, the top top five MVPs, uh, I'll give it to Joel and B just because I haven't seen him. So I I gotta take the media's um play uh, word for it at the moment. I'm gonna watch him play soon. I have to take Embiid. Joker's a dog. KD, Kawhi, Leonard, will be, uh, Kawhi will be third, KD will be second, Steph Curry, and 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 it's close. I I feel like it's close. Like the top four for me is close. I like I said I can't speak on Joel Embiid because I haven't I I haven't focused on him yet. But when I do, I, I'll come back and I'll tell you guys if yeah it, it's legit or not. So I'm gonna switch um gears. Uh, before I switch gears, let me take a sip of water. I'm quick, you know, thirsty. Well, we're not sponsored yet, so uh, you know, I gotta hold, the, I gotta hold the bottle like this, man. So yeah, we're gonna um switch gears. We're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk some NFL now. Um, let's talk Deshaun Watson, man. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson officially requested a trade last week. Um, says, says has nothing to do with the, uh, uh, Cullen, Cully, I don't know his name, but the, the, the new hiring for the Texans it has, it has nothing to do with it. Okay. But then in, in the press conference, uh, Cully, I, I believe his name is Cully says that's the reason why they, they hired me to get Deshaun Watson to have Deshaun, to play, to coach with Deshaun, the coach Deshaun Watson. We're gonna see, man. But it's just ironic when once you got once you were named the uh, head coach of the Houston Texans, that's when he was like, "Okay, lift that no trade clause for me, man. Let me get out of here." And I'm 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 not saying like it had like I'm I'm not saying that he hated the hire or whatnot. I'm not I'm not putting that out there. I'm not putting that out there in that atmosphere. I'm just saying it just it's. Could you say it's oxymoron for that? Uh, I don't know. Could, could could you say that? Like you, he officially requests a trade after you got hired, and then during during the interview, you say, "Nah, you know, I, I'm I got hired because I'm going to be coaching him." I'm no the reason why I took the job is because I'm I'm going to be coaching him. To each his own. To each his own. Okay, but my thing is. How do you have such a dynamic dog of a quarterback like that and have him unhappy? You 
don't put him in you you don't take any of his um suggestions when it comes to GM hiring. You don't take any of his suggestions when it comes to head coach hiring. And he's supposed to be the face of your franchise. Unless um David Johnson's the new face of the franchise, apparently to, to the Houston Texans. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not a Houston Texans fan. I don't really follow the team like that. But 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 this is sad. This this is sad to watch. A team that had a lot of promise. It had a lot of promise throughout the last decade. And then now with, with Deshaun Jordan, you're like, oh, they eventually had to get somewhere. But then, you know, um, the Bill O'Brien conspiracy. I, I call it a conspiracy. Because I think Bill O'Brien had some beef with the owner. And Bill O'Brien tried to sabotage the team. Because I still don't understand why you trade away DeAndre Hopkins. Knowing... You, you you could trade DeAndre Hopkins. Well, first of all, you, you signed him already. So I like this this theory right here doesn't is it's it's null and voided, but I'm still gonna say it anyway. I can understand Deshaun Watson I mean DeAndre Hopkins, which which were what was um reports that there, there was reports about he wanted to like restructure his contract and get more money, something like that. There, there, there were reports about that last year. I could understand, you know, you have something like that. And then you have you have a guy like let's say, if it was like a Mike Evans Chris Godwin situation, Mike Evans Chris Godwin, Mike Evans aren't cause you some trouble. Oh, we got Chris Godwin in here, so hey, we could trade him away. You have DeAndre Hopkins, you have Will Fuller. Will Fuller is nice, but Will Fuller doesn't stay on the field four games max this year was his longest season in in his entire career and he and he still missed the last six games because of ped use come on guy come on man and then you traded away what two two first round picks of the dolphins one for the Lermy the 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 Lermy the Lermy tunsil trade it's crazy the dolphins could have had a chance Dolphins had a good chance. Of, if, if Deshaun Watson wasn't on the team, the Dolphins would have had the number one pick in the, NFL, in, in the draft this year. Wow. Also, to get back on Bill O'Brien, you beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, I still have a problem with this. You beat the Kansas City Chiefs week, I believe it was week seven, week eight of the regular season. At Arrowhead, you go in to Arrowhead, division around the playoffs, and don't run the same goddamn game plan? You don't run the same freaking game plan? I would have fired you there. That's that, that's just me. That's just I, I would I would have told Bill O'Brien, hey man, you know, you, you, you want an Uber or something? Because because you're definitely not getting on this team flight. Please give me your badge, your keys to the offices. You're not allowed here no more. Or I'll just I'll just start calling people, hey, ch- change the locks, man, because Bill Bryan's fired, bro. I would have done that, man. I would have I would done that. That's, nah. So, okay, so so Cully says the reason why he got the job is because he, he knows that he's going to be working on Deshaun Watson. Okay. I'm an optimistic guy. I don't know about this situation, but in, in, in life, I'm an optimistic guy. How can we repair this relationship? You don't have a first round pick. You can't tell Deshaun Watson, hey, man, we're going to get Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, Eric Waddle. You, you, you really can't say that. You try and get Kenny Galladay in, in free agency. You try to every time you 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 you're thinking about game planning or hey man we we was talking to this receiver or this lineman or this DB what do you think about that I think that's the only way you just basically start kissing his ass basically start saying hey man make basically the new GM is Deshaun Watson. And you come to him about everything. I don't think that works, but that's a shot in the dark. But I think that's the only way you could repair this relationship. Start, like, hanging out with him every single day. Like, do something like that. But he's not even answering calls for, 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 from the Texans. So, I don't know. It's sad. Houston, nah, that's, that's sad for Houston. Houston, like, really... I don't want to say they were going to overtake the Cowboys. But Houston... 
if you're projecting the two teams, right? Up until this season, of course. Projecting the two teams. They're still, like, about up here going up. But if you really look at it, who's who's the better quarterback? Dak Prescott or Deshaun Watson? I'm going Deshaun Watson. No one, that, that, that's no hate to, to Dak Prescott, but I'm going Deshaun Watson. So that the the Houston's projectory for projection to win the Super Bowl is greater than the Cowboys of that alone. Because at the end of the day, if teams are evenly matched, it goes like who between the two who who who's the best right there. That's what we're gonna see in the Super Bowl coming up soon. But between those two, who's the best? And 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 that's how you know me between Dak and Deshaun. I'm going to Sean, bro. It is what it is, man. Um, so I guess so. The final five minutes. Um, I said I'm gonna recap the NFL in five minutes. Uh, the final five minutes. I said I'm gonna recap the NFL in five minutes, huh? With these final five minutes, I will recap the NFL. Yeah, it's still no sponsor. Um. So it, it was, first of all, I want to c- commend, commend the NFL organization, the Commissioner Goodell, you finally did something right in your life, um, the players, the coaches, the 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 special teams people, the facility guys, all equipment managers, all, all those people who made it possible for us, us loyal football fans, to actually watch a full 16 game 17 week season with no cancellation of games. Yes, yes there's games that got postponed and got moved to later dates and whatnot. But at the end of the day, all the games were played. MLB couldn't say that. We don't know about the NBA right now, but the NBA at this moment they they've had they've had a couple they have had they've had a couple uh, postponing games. The NFL, this is the final week of the NFL. Going into the final week, there has not been any dramatic scheduling change. There have not been any cancellation of games, especially with what is going on in this world because of YouTube. I can't really say it. You know, your boy trying to get some money. Um, With what has been going on in this world for the past year, with all the unknowns, the NFL has done the best job and keeping together, actually having fans at certain places where, where like you know, the 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 state is technically open, Texas, my um, Florida, those places, places like that. To do those things, you gotta you gotta give it up to the NFL. Their protocols were great, everything was great. I feel like everything was. I feel like everything was. Everybody was unified for one for for one good, and that's playing football. And I feel like, to be honest, to be to be honest, to be quite honest with you, not thinking about it, like I I didn't I don't have this plan or whatnot, but not thinking about it, I feel like the NFL is the only te- is the only organization who could do that because football in itself is a team is such a team game. Uh, my 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 coach he used to say this to well a bunch of coaches used to say this but and and then i I think it was until my 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 college coach shout out trial said this to me in football or let's say basketball for a second in, in basketball if one player runs the wrong like set he has the wrong he does the wrong um dick um thing in 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 in, in a certain set the play could still go off. But in football, all 11 guys, if one player has a misstep or something on a play, on a certain play, offense or defense, it could go from a four-yard gain, a touchdown, to a negative, which is for defense, a touchdown, offense, a negative uh, fumble, interception. From one false step, every all ten other guys could have been right, one hundred percent right. Now one step messes up the thing. So I think that alone, having that mindset as an NFL player, as a football player, helps you out in 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 those certain in in, in those certain um things, in those certain situations. So I like I said, I commend the NFL for that. I'm happy the NFL. I seen the NFL. 
throughout its, its entirety, even though we're not done yet. We have another week to go. Also, I feel like this has been the best, I think, soothing season. Like, I, I like because with a year that we've had to just sit down on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and just watch football, relax, unwind, not, not really think about what's going on outside. To me, sports is the greatest outlet you have in life. That that's that's me personally. Yeah, the greatest outlet outlet. Like when I when I go outside to shoot around, like I feel like I'm free or whatnot. When I watch football, I feel like I'm free. I don't have to worry about the the burdens that life gives me. You know, you you, you guys understand what I'm saying. And football by 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 being able to I basically separate. The, the social injustices, the pandemic, all that stuff. And just like for those three hours, it's just concentrating on football. Beautiful, beautiful NFL, beautiful. Um, some other things I want to say uh, before I get out of here. Um, the Eagles are who I thought they were. The Eagles are a bunch of... I'm going to give you guys a G-rated version. I don't want to get kicked off. Are a bunch of soft puppies. That's all I gotta say. They're a bunch of soft puppies. I know I know who you guys are. I wasn't rooting for you guys anyway, week 17. I just wanted you I just thought you guys were gonna show you guys were gonna prove to me that the lyrics that Mick Mill be saying in his songs was facts. But it 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 wasn't. So so Philly doesn't get it out the mud. Philly if, 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 um, Philly ain't ain't be with a round of sh uh with a bunch of shooters or whatnot on, on 21st and Burks. Um Philly don't they um, um people don't be starving in Philly people people don't be starving in Philly so that, that's a dub man it's it's a, it's a hard it's hard to listen to Meek Mill now thanks to the Philadelphia Eagles and Doug Peterson thank you you out of here man anyway also the New York Giants were the best I tweeted I tweeted I'll probably put it in the edit but I tweeted the New York Giants are the best team in the division at the start of the season. And I still stand by it. Yes, we didn't win. A, we didn't win a division, but the team that won a division, we beat them twice. And if it wasn't for if it wasn't for the Eagles being the soft puppies that they are, the Eagles most likely win that game. Giants make it the super. Uh, Giants make it to the playoffs. We beat the Bucks. We go out and whoever the Saints it doesn't matter. It didn't, we're gonna beat them too. Make the Super Bowl beat up on Patrick Mahomes, but that's you know that's for another day. Anyways, um, Patrick Mahomes is the best uh, quarterback in. The... Yeah, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL. I, I can say that. A clear day. Last year I said Russell Wilson, but this year I say Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is the most exciting quarterback I've ever seen in my in, in my life. In terms of, well, I talked I, early, early in the show. I talked about presence, right? That's what Patrick Mahomes gives to me. He that's the advice he gives me. Once that guy gets onto the field, he, he I, I don't think you guys know, but he be he be walking like this onto the field, like and he, he be chewing his mouthpiece a little bit, walking like that. And I'm like, damn, he's coming out there. But hey, man, I'm just trying to start the conversation. This is Gerald Cadet. What do you guys think?